Welcome to Buckets Action Network's WNBA betting podcast presented by BetMGM. This is our Best Bets episode for Wednesday, July 17th. It's a two-game slate, the final day of regular season games before the All-Star and Olympic break. Plus, we will take an early look at the All-Star game. We have a line. We have a spread for the game, I should say. I'm Maria Marino, back with Dano Mattia. Dano, it's been... It's been a minute. You like moved across the country, so we haven't had you on in like a week or two. We miss you, and I'm glad you're here with us to send us off before the Olympic break. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, uh, <laughs> my first time uh, absorbing the WNBA from the Mountain Time Zone. Highly recommend it. It's great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll get settled in Texas eventually, and uh, I would love to talk about my best bets. And best bet number one would be the over in Indiana and Dallas. It opened at 170, but of course people pounced on it. Uh, I play it to 180. Uh, These teams are just going to run. This is a good Caitlin triple-double game. If we get that prop, uh, it'll probably be at like plus 1,000. I'd sprinkle that. Uh, But yeah, so I'd play it up to uh, 179. Uh, Go crazy. Last game before the break. And then the other one is... uh, I, I don't want to advise betting it now. I'm going to wait a little bit because Ryan Howard okay. just got uh, announced as available. Uh, but I will be betting Link's first quarter, Link's first half, Link's full game. Uh, I, I Everyone knows I can't stand the dream, even though they have been covering lately. They've been covering <laughs> some good spreads. But, you know, maybe Ryan Howard comes back and messes up that flow. I don't know. But we'll get into that. But, yeah. But you're going to bet the Link's tomorrow if you're following me. And I hope uh, hope they do well. I love it. Just coming right out with it, not making anybody wait. We have the best bets. We have some gener- uh, generic logic, I should say. So I want to start. Let's start with Fever Wings just because uh, you're already expecting like a slug fest here. I noticed that uh, Wings opponents have averaged 94.6 points per game in their last 10. And, you know, the Fever are the fifth best offense overall this season. I'm sure that's been better recently just because they've been playing better recently. Uh, Obviously, the Fever coming off the upset at Minnesota on Sunday, beat Phoenix before that. Um, These two teams have not yet played each other this season. Indiana did lose by three to Dallas in the preseason. That was pre-Kelsey Mitchell days, though. Um, Wings... Worst team in the W. They've lost seven straight against the spread. That includes an outright win over Atlanta. They were actually favored in a game, uh, did not cover. But tell me more about this game. Yeah, that feels like forever ago. Uh, yeah, and we've had a couple <laughs> matchups this week that are like, wait, they have not played yet? This is wild. Uh, but I do love what I'm seeing from the Fever. Like, Especially in that fourth quarter against the Lynx, you know, one of the best defenses. Granted, they're missing Nafisa Collier, who's a, a great defender in her own right. But to, to come back, I think they were down eight in that fourth quarter, and or maybe down ten going in, down ten going in the fourth quarter as yeah. seven point dogs and to win outright. God, I mean, special special team. The chemistry's going. The vibes are at an all time high. Uh, and this is a team that's, you know, young. They're not going to be, you know, waiting to get to the the break. I think the the vibes are just too dang good, you know? So right. uh, I'm, I mean, and especially based on what you said about the the Wings defense, want to add Fever team total over. I think it's a, okay. it's a smash Okay. Hit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, it's so funny. You were like, it's hard to believe they haven't played yet. Well, remember how much we harped on how tough the Fever schedule was to start the season? Because they weren't playing teams like Dallas. They were playing all the good teams like New York three times, Connecticut three times, Vegas, back-to-back, yada, yada, yada. So if they finally get Dallas here, um, favored by four are the Fever. I do feel like, to your point, I know you like the, you know, you're targeting the totals, but... I do feel like the fever have got to take care of business here. This is just not a game that you can lose. I mean, granted, I thought the same thing against the mystics last week, but 
The Mystics are a way better team against the spread. It was also a camp day game, so it was a little bit of a funky schedule. There was the random starting lineup change that we had from uh, Christy Sides benching yeah. Alyssa Smith. So I have to think that the Fever have still grown since then, that I've been saying it, their mantra is make the playoffs, and they, they just have to beat a team like the Wings. What I liked about the, the last win you talked about over Minnesota is, uh, you know, Caitlin wasn't shooting great. She did have some turnovers yet again, but I felt like she played her best ball in the fourth quarter. And, you know, Kelsey Mitchell and Aaliyah Boston continue to do what they do. You got the three all-stars going into all-star break. I think they want to go out on a high note. No, a hundred percent. You're, you're definitely right. And uh, I mean, not saying that the wings are incapable of winning a game, uh, Odyssey's, Odyssey Sims has been great for them. They they knocked off the Lynx uh, at home. Um, granted, it was a tough spot for the Lynx, but so they're capable of doing some things. I just am, am not too worried, yeah. uh, especially the the connection like you're you're talking about between. Uh, I mean, you, you brought it up a few episodes ago between Aaliyah and Caitlin, how it's kind of blossoming, and uh, I mean yeah. we haven't even seen the peak of it yet. So uh, everyone's on a high. Uh, <laughs> I, I literally have no, I, I don't know why I'm not betting fever minus four. Um, maybe I'm getting way too ahead of myself, <laughs> but uh, I, I do, I do like it. Uh, that mid six game, you're right. does kind of hang in my head, but yeah, uh, I'm all over the fever and, and points, points, uh, yes. the fever more points, and, better, points. and they tend to go, they tend to go hand in hand, I would say. Yeah, and I might get around to betting the fever as well. I'm that's where I'm leaning at this point, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think this is going to be a yet again a fast paced game. We've been seeing it a lot with Indiana, uh, and hopefully the uh, the the turnovers will continue to not you know hurt them too bad because they just keep running and running and running and getting enough possessions to kind of counter it. So. Hey, I'm glad we get uh, I'm glad we get this game before the break, and let's let's circle back now to the dream and links. So, first of all, you you already mentioned Ryan Howard not on the injury report all of a sudden. I mean, she's been out for quite a while, so it seems like she's going to be healthy. You know, going into the the three on three Olympics and. On the other side, Nafisa Collier is actually questionable for the Lynx. Now, I'm a little skeptical of her actually playing just because, look, Cheryl Reeve is also the Team USA 5-on-5 five five coach. I, she knows you know, the value Good of call. Nafisa. I think um, we're already seeing it. We're recording here Thursday night as the Liberty and Sun are playing. I'm surprised that you haven't yelled out yet during this recording. <laughs> but we already saw, you know, Brianna Stewart was ruled I'm out. very happy right now. <laughs> well, we already yeah. saw Stewie was ruled out for the Liberty, you know, le- leading up into this Olympic break because she's been a little banged up. You know, does does Cheryl decide, hey, like, let's, let's get, start working Nafisa back in or we just, like, leave it alone? So that's something that uh, we have to look for and makes it a little tricky. But, you know, the Lynx were favored by eight and a half, now seven and a half, which is probably uh, as a result of that Ryan Howard news. Um, Lynx, we mentioned, sure. lost to Indiana, sure. lost to Seattle before that. Interestingly, Lynx are 10 and three at home this season, only seven and six against the spread, though, at home. Um, They have won and covered against Atlanta in both meetings this season, both prior to the Nafisa injury, by the way. Um, The Dream have lost seven straight. Six and two ATS, though, in their last eight games. So you were talking about how they've been covering, especially against uh, good teams. They played last on Sunday, covered the spread against Seattle. Yeah. uh, I mean, it's... I want to start with your point about fee. I, okay. I mean, if I'm Cheryl, do do you do you think she she looks at it and is like, do I need fee to win this game? Probably not. Uh, sure. Atlanta, sure. yeah, you know they're feisty. Uh, can see Tina Charles having a big game, uh, but it kind of depends. I mean, Alana Smith, you know, who's shown the ability to shut down players like John Quill Jones. 
other mm-hmm. bigs, but ma- mainly John Quell to the point where John Quell looks like not even a WNBA player. So uh, if he plays, it's a it's a smash. But sure. you know, without it, I just trust that uh, the Lynx are also due. They're going to be really pissed off from that last game against the Fever, blowing the ten point lead in the fourth. Uh, I mean, they've had a quite a, or quite a few bad fourth quarters as of late too. So, uh, I mean, I, I do worry about that a bit, but I expect them to come out firing. So that's why I'm looking first quarter, first half mainly. Gotcha. Yeah. And you mentioned to, um, Alana Smith, I think it's Alana apologies if that's, if it's Alana, <laughs> but, um, she, she had some foul trouble in the last game against Indiana too. And I think that that sure. really hurt Minnesota cause she was pretty much doing whatever she wanted in that game. All right. So you're saying you like first quarter, first half best, but you're also going to go full game. Yeah. Can't, cannot fade Tanisha, right. Uh, last game for the break. I'm not going to have many <laughs> other opportunities to do it. So, um, what number do you prefer for full game in terms of the spread? What would you prefer it get to? Uh, five and a half, two, two possessions. Like get, a yeah. Five and a half is great, especially okay. if the links are hitting threes right. the way they should be. Um, you know, I seven and a half is a little scary. Uh, can the links blow this team out? Absolutely. They play the way they did against the Sparks in LA. Yeah, team doesn't need fee, but you know we're not we're not seeing that always. So, uh, so yeah, um, it's 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 there's some weird trends. I will say overs are hitting. You know, dating back to. Uh, Dating back to 2020, I want to say the overs are hitting uh, on games under or over 160 at a 59% rate. Uh, unders are hitting at a 58% rate. The line is under 160. Uh, this awesome guy named Tomas who gave me that stat earlier today and has been doing some great research. <laughs> also, road teams are, have been uh, mostly dominating um, against the spread. Uh, we saw it. Uh, in the three games today leading up to all-star break uh, or two games with the uh, the Mercury covering uh, outright as a favorite. And uh, well, I guess Seattle did not cover, um, but Seattle blew that game. But still, I yeah. do like a lot of favorites uh, going in a break, taking care of business. Um, and there are some, some teams like we talked about with the fever who just – can't seem to, or who seem to have it going and they have a lot of youth. There are some teams who have some older players who are ready for this dang all-star break and Olympic break. They're going to have like a whole month and a half off. Uh, it's going to be really nice. So um, that's why with the young teams, I mean, I bet I, I could see Dallas like getting killed tomorrow uh, because of that. Like, do you think Tierra McCowan is like going to give it her all? Uh, I've been waiting for that for like two months now. Um, not seeing it. <laughs> Uh, I think I think there's some people who are just absolutely checked out, you know. Hmm. Well, look, uh, real quick, you mentioned uh, you had mentioned Caitlin Clark triple double, and I'm seeing it mm-hmm. at around plus twelve hundred right now. So, oh, it's already might, up. Might uh, be worth we, no choice. Add it, <laughs> add it to my bets. Like leave, oh, leave the, right. leave the viewers, the voters, a lasting impact before the all-star game. Wow. Caitlin Clark just dropped a triple <laughs> double and she's not on her Olympic team. It's going to, it's going to slap. Ooh. Okay. Well, speaking of all of this, speaking of who's ready for the break, you know, who might be motivated during the all-star game. Let's just touch on this all-star game real quick. And I'll say this, um, depending on when, Uh, We get markets, more markets for the All-Star Game, such as, you know, MVP, props, things of that nature. We may have another bonus episode of the pod prior to the game on Saturday. So make sure you're following so you don't miss it. Um, If we're able to bring that to you, we would love to. Um, And then just so everybody knows, too, we're going to have a Women's Basketball Olympics preview releasing Tuesday of next week with Joe DeLara and Brian Fonseca. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, we do, oh, do they have know the rosters? a line. Are they, are they up on it? I need to send them some notes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to say I need to send them some notes. Hey, I got some, I got some sneaky picks. Maybe you need to join them. Maybe I need to uh, facilitate uh-huh. that uh, that cameo by you. So, I mean, if you're around Monday, <laughs> you, 
I, I'm sure they'd love oh, yeah. they'd love I, another guest. I, I, if we get some, some groups and some like to make the semifinals and whatnot, I am, I am, uh, I'm, I'll happily send, send a little video in or a little voice memo that you could play. Okay. Um, well, you know what we'll do too? It's, even if you're not, even if Dano is not part of our women's basketball Olympics preview on Tuesday, as we get more into it, into the Olympics, we'll have you on Dano and we'll, we'll do a catch up and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk some bets at that point. So again, just make sure you're following the feed because you can't miss these things. And you know, the schedule is, is different. And obviously once Olympics end, we'll go back to our usual, uh, our usual schedule of at least, you know, two episodes per week. Anyway, I was trying to say that <laughs> the line came out for the, for the all-star Not game. Bad. So we had, it's okay. It's okay. No, this is all important programming information. So I'm glad. And uh, Team USA favored by six and a half against the WNBA All Stars. Initial reaction to that? Uh, it's probably the right line. Uh, it's going to be intense. I mean, both. I mean, I think the last time we saw it, the the All Stars ended up winning outright. Uh, so it's 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 a weird game. Just want to say, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know when books are going to post a total, but like, you know, you gotta go down, bet the under. Um, bet the under is that what you're saying? Anyways, but yeah. hold on, hold on. You can't I, just, I hope you they can't don't catch on. Over that. <laughs> okay. You know, I just don't. I mean, it's, I, it's, <laughs> it's the, the it's the surefire. The pod, don't be spotting it from the. Yes. Yes, bet of the year, honestly. Can't wait to watch those teams. Really? So much pride, obviously. Like, like, yeah. I mean, there. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an absolute showdown. Thank God it's not in Vegas because everybody be trying to show off for the NBA players um, that are there for summer league. So we won't see that. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hotly contested. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, as far as the spread goes, uh, interested to hear your thoughts. I kind of, I like see myself leaning both ways, but. Uh, Curious to see what you have to say about it. Yeah, you know, I'm not feeling super strongly one way or the other. I mean, I do think that the big narrative, obviously, is some of these rookies on the Team WNBA side, namely Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. And I feel like the players on the other side, like on the Olympic squad, are going to want to be asserting that no, we are the Olympians for a reason. We are here. These rookies are still new. They, you know, they're still on the come up. Like we've been here. So I think there's going to be a sense of pride for Team USA. But at the same time, winning this game is not their priority. Winning a gold medal in Paris is their priority. Um, and then also, too, we have to think about the mindset of uh, a Caitlin Clark. I say Clark mo more so than Reese, just because Clark was, you know, the one that was really not really, but she was, you know, she was in the running to make the Olympic team. And there was a big debate about whether or not she should have been on the team. So uh, I think that's something to, something to keep an eye on. And like, also just the dynamic be between Clark and Reese, like, how is that going to be? Like, I I'm very, very interested to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, so I say all this to say, I'm not really leaning one side or the other quite yet. But if you had to pick right now, <laughs> if you had to pick right now, what would you take? If I had to pick right now, I would pick team WNBA plus six and a half. That's fair, I'm right? You. I'm with you. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm glad Cause you I said wanna, it. Cause, cause you're already telling me. Um, you're, you're expecting defense in this game. You're expecting an effort, unlike what we typically see at the NBA all-star game. You're seeing like these, first of all, I, I would, I would say, tell me if you agree. I would say that in general, especially in the regular season, the overall effort defensively is stronger for WNBA teams than NBA teams the teams I, I feel tend to play a lot more together, whatever. Um, but for the all-star game as well, like because of those motivations that we've just outlined and because yeah. there are going to be more eyeballs on this all-star game probably than ever before. And Phoenix is like taking this really seriously, by the way, like Matt Ishbia, the owner of the uh, Mercury and the Suns, like 
he's trying to go big. Like there's, this is, this is going to be a big deal. I wouldn't be surprised. You were saying like, oh, uh, you know, there might not be as many NBA players there without it being coinciding with summer league or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a whole lot of NBA players that still show up. That's a good point. That's a good point. The investment is there, <laughs> uh, but I'm ready. I'm ready to see what you're talking about. Let's let's see Arike play defense for the first time all season. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. I mean, there's going to be some personalities. Do we know yet who's starting for uh, Team W yet? Because I I haven't I been able don't to find it. Think so, but I assume it's the. I think it's the people who got the highest votes. So I. I you know, uh, what's her name? Um, yeah. Caitlin and Angel will probably be starting. Uh, being coached Which by Stephanie so White. crazy, by the way. To have, uh, to have two rookies start. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Basically, overall, I think we're going to see a competitive game, which includes, you know, defense specifically. And so I like the idea of kind of countering the typical notion of like, oh, all-star games are going to be high scoring. And then, yeah, I at this number, I lean, um, I lean Team W to keep it close with uh, Team USA because once again, you know, Team USA, I think they're gonna have a lot of pride on the line, but at the, at the same time, it's not, it's just not their main, it's not their main focus, it's not their main goal. They gotta, they have their sights set on Paris, whereas the other players are like, after this, we get to chill. Like we can like go yeah. all out in this game and then we can just kick our feet up for a few weeks. Yeah. I, I will say I'm a little disappointed in myself or I guess my sister for getting married next weekend. Uh, it'll be the first all <laughs> game I haven't been at. Haven't been at in years. And and I, I, I'm telling you in Chicago, I go up to Kelsey Plum. I'm like, hey, what's up, MVP? She's like, I, I think I'm going to get it. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. We're betting it. I also asked her about the three-point contest, and she was like, I'm winning that too, and she got out in the first round. But in Vegas last year, I go up to Jewel, or, yeah, to Jewel Lloyd. I'm like, hey, MVP, what do you think? She's like, I think I got it too. I'm like, oh, my God, like, have to bet it. Of course she wins. Then I told Sab I saw the script. I didn't think she'd, you know, make 37 out of 40. But uh, I'm mad that I don't have my my boots on the ground there. Um yeah, so um, I have to live vicariously through somebody. Uh, we need to make sure that action is well represented there with you next year for sure. Well, thank you. I um, I had an opportunity to potentially go, and I I couldn't sadly. So I'm I'm very I'm very you know pained by that. But I'm pretty sure our homie Brendan Glasheen is going to be going. So maybe we can get him to put a put a word in with somebody. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking uh, about. Like I said, I need to call him. Keep a, keep an eye out later this week in case we get uh, a good amount of markets in time. We'll try to get you another episode with some more detailed plays for the All Star Game. But Daniel Mattia, epic return to the pod. Thank you for all of the tips, all of the advice, all of the energy, personality. <laughs> it's much appreciated. And we'll definitely be talking to you soon during the Olympic break. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> and, and go Libs. Go Maria. Uh, life is good. Uh, and and you, you've been, everyone who's come on has been great. Uh, the only episode I didn't get to listen to is the most recent one, but just uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, Maria works yes. so hard. And, uh and oh. we have awesome producers and stuff. So thank you. Oh, wow. This all of a sudden felt like a, like an award acceptance speech or something. I will take it. Uh, but I echo what Dano says. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Buckets. Once again, we are presented by BetMGM. We'll be back soon. Follow the pod so you don't miss any episodes. Also, download the Action app if you don't already have it. Follow Dano. Follow the crew because they will probably be logging more bets throughout the week. We'll see you next time. Until then, let's get buckets.